This is a video for section 8.1 of our textbook, which is applications of recurrence relations. I do want to point out that I also covered this section in discrete math one. So I am going to look at one example that we looked at in that video, but I'm not going to cover the Tower of Hanoi puzzle or the Fibonacci sequence. So I will link the original video for discrete math one, which does cover those two topics in the comments of this video. So for this video, we're going to look at a couple of different applications of recurrence relations. Before we dive into an example, I want to make sure that we have all of the vocabulary straight. I tend not to focus on the vocabulary, but there's a lot going on in this section and you need to know exactly what you are being asked to find. So we're going to be obviously working with recurrence relations and we have looked at recursive functions and recursive sets. And if you'll recall, we always had like a basis and then a recursive part of the definition. And the basis told us, you know, maybe one or two or three initial values. And then the recursive definition told us how to find the next values. So that's what we're dealing with here. We have a recursive definition and the recursive definition has two parts. So the recursive definition in this case is going to define a sequence rather than a function or a set. And it's going to specify one or more initial terms. So this is the first part of the definition. Remember, we called that the basis part. And a rule or equation for determining subsequent terms using preceding terms. And that rule is called the recurrence relation. The solution to a recurrence relation is the sequence whose terms satisfy the recurrence relation. And we're going to look at an example of this. But again, the solution is just the actual sequence. So you might see it written, you know, in the sequence bracket like this, or you might see it written to four, six, eight, and so on and so forth, dot, dot, dot. You might also want to find an explicit function. So an explicit function is helpful because an explicit function is going to give us an actual function where I can plug in n, so plug in some number, and find the exact value of the sequence at that number. Whereas if I'm using the recursive relation, I'm going to have to find every value before it in order to find that value. For our first example, we're going to work through this together. Now, this is the example that I did cover in the previous video for discrete math one, um, but hopefully I'll do a little bit better job of explaining in this video. And we are asked to find three different things, a recursive definition, the solution and the explicit function. We don't like that purple color because it's so hard to see. So we're just going to use white. So let's start with understanding the question. The number of bacteria in a colony doubles every hour. If the colony begins with five bacteria, how many will be present in n hours? So we're finding the recursive definition, solution and explicit function. So before I try to find any of those, let's just see what's going on in this question. I start with five and then it doubles. So the next hour, at the end of the first hour, I have 10. At the end of the next hour, I have 20. At the end of the next hour, I have 40, 80, and so on. So if I want to find the recursive definition, the recursive definition is, remember, that rule that says, how do I get from one value to the next? And obviously it says the colony doubles every hour. So to find it, I just took this times two to get to the next value. So five times two is 10, 10 times two is 20, 20 times two is 40 and so on. So I can write my recursive definition as a sub n is equal to two times whatever happened before that, a sub n minus one. Now I do want to point out that you might see it written as a sub n plus one is equal to two times a sub n. And, and that's also perfectly acceptable. I'm going to stick with this method. I just find it a little bit cleaner. So 
that's my recursive definition. And although it doesn't say give the basis step or give the initial conditions, it's implied when you're finding a recursive definition because this doesn't help me to find anything unless I have a starting point because I need that value before. So this is for all values where n is greater than or equal to 1 and a sub 0 is equal to 5 because we started with 5 bacteria. So that's all I need for the recursive definition. I need what's the rule, what's the domain, so here's the rule, take 2 times the value before, what's the domain, whenever n is greater than or equal to 1, where do I start? I start at 5. So that's all I need for that first part. Now for the solution, the solution, if you'll recall, is the sequence that fits the definition. And I've really already done that. So this, these values here, which you would write as 5, 10, 20, 40, 80, and so on, that technically is the solution. Now, what we like to do is also find the explicit function because it helps us in the solution to find you know additional values but if they just asked for the solution this would be the solution is the set of all of the values that actually fit this recursive definition so the explicit function is the last thing that we need to do and there's a couple of different ways that you can go about finding it but let's go ahead and start finding this together a sub 0 we said was 5 and then a sub 1 is where we took 2 times, according to our definition, 2 times a sub 0, which was 2 times 5, which was 10. And then a sub 2 was where we took 2 times a sub 1, which is 2 times 10, but I'm going to actually write it as 2 times 5, and you'll see why in a moment. And so yes, my solution is 20, but what I'm interested in trying to do is finding the pattern. So let's do a sub 3 and then we'll start to look for a pattern. So a sub 3 is 2 times a2, which is 2 times, remember a2 was this, 2 times 2 times 5 which does, of course, give us the correct value of 40. But again, why am I writing it so weird? What am I doing that for? Well, this is 5, and this is 2 times 5, and this is 2 squared times 5, and this is 2 to the third times 5. So as we can see, we're starting to build a pattern. So this method that we're using here is called iteration. And essentially, it's just writing them out until you're able to find a pattern. Now, what I can see from my pattern is this is essentially 2 to the 0 times 5, and notice this is a sub 0. And this is 2 to the first times 5, and notice this is a 1. So a 2 is 2 squared times 5, a 3 is 2 to the third times 5. So really, if I wanted to find any value it would appear to be 2 to the n times 5. Or you might also see it 5 times 2 to the n. Either way is perfectly acceptable. Now, it's always a good idea to check it. So let's go ahead and check it. If this was a 0 and this was a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, let's go ahead and check it with a 4. So let's make sure that this works with a 4. So a 4 according to the explicit function that I used, said I should be able to take 2 to the 4th times 5. Well, 2 to the 4th is 16, and 16 times 5 is 80. And so I feel pretty confident with the function that I've come up with. So the recursive definition here gives us any value as long as you have all of the values before it. The explicit function here gives us any solution, and again, you can also include that's for all n's greater than or equal to 1. We're going to look at another application of recurrence relations, which is interest. And 
before I get into this question, one thing to note is yes, I'm very aware that there is a compound interest formula that I could use to answer the question, how much money is in the account after one year? That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to work with recurrence relations, so that's why we're not going that way. Uh, the other thing to understand is exactly how compounded interest works. So if you don't understand that, then this question is going to be a little bit difficult. So I'm going to give you a quick tutorial. So when you have interest that's compounded, you have money in the account. And at the end of, if it's compounded monthly, the end of the first month, you're going to have the money that you started with, and then you're going to have a little bit of money that you earned in interest. And then the next month, you're going to have the money that you started with plus the interest and you're going to actually be earning interest on all of that so you have more interest okay because you actually earned it on everything here and then the next month you're going to earn it on all of that so you're going to have the money that you started with plus the money that you earned uh, the first month and the money that you earned the next month and you're making interest on all of that so now you're adding a little bit more because you're making interest on all of this so that's how compounded interest works is that you're making money on not just the money that you put into the account but also the interest that you're earning so you're earning interest upon interest which is why it's called compounded so sorry if that was unclear but that's basically how it works so now let's go back to our question and I'm going to focus first on the recursive definition. So the recursive definition, as we know, says, where do we start and how do we find everything else? So where do we start? Well, that, that one's easy. We start with $100. Well, how do I find what's in the account at the end of a month? Well, this one's pretty straightforward. I'm making, 0 0.005 interest each month. So if I want to find a sub n, uh, let's, let's just start with a sub 1. If I wanted to find at the end of the first month, I would have $100 in the account that I started with, and then I would also have 100 times 0 0.005. So where did that come from? This is the interest that I earned from the money being in the account for a month. So at the end of the month, I'm making that 0 0.005 or 5.5% 5 .5 on the $100. And I'm not even gonna tell you what the total is because that doesn't matter. We're just looking at the, um, at the pattern. And then the next month, I would take whatever this total is, we'll just call it X. I would take whatever that total is and I would have that plus that times 0 0.005. Okay, so now let's think about it in terms of a sub n, because that's the recurrence relation, right? The recursive definition. Um, so a sub n would be, well, let's go back to what we just did. To find a sub one, I took a sub zero plus a sub zero times 0 0.005, and that gave me a sub one. Well, I can also think of that using the distributive property as I can factor an a sub zero out of both of those, and that gives me one plus 0 0.005, which is 1.005. And then I can do the same thing here and say, well, here I had x and then x times 0 0.005, so it was x times 1.005. But remember, x was just a sub one. So what's a sub n? a sub n is a sub n minus one times 1.005. And you can have that in either order. It honestly doesn't matter. So the recursive definition then after all of that is, I'm gonna just erase all of this to give myself room. The recursive definition is a sub zero is equal to 100, a sub n is equal to 1.005 times a sub n minus one. So we're just taking 1.005 times whatever was in the account before for n is greater than or equal to one. Here is my recursive definition. Now that's that was pretty straightforward and easy, I would say. 
what we have to do now is find the explicit function, which is usually much trickier. Now, we, in our last example, took a look at a process called iteration, where we'd found a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, and looked for a pattern. In this one, I actually want to show you the opposite way, which is called back substitution. And it's not my favorite way. Um, I actually prefer iteration, but I do want to show you both methods. So let's take a look at what it looks like with back substitution. Again, we're looking for the explicit function, so we don't want to have to rely on the whatever happened the month before. We want to just be able to plug in what month it is. So if I start with my recursive definition, which was 1.005 times a sub n minus 1. If I wanted to know using that same function, what's a sub n minus 1? Well, you would tell me, obviously, it's 1.005 times a sub n minus 2. That's according to our recursive definition. So if I wanted to then rewrite this function, and I wanted to replace a sub n minus 1 with what it's equal to, that would give me 1.005 a sub n minus 2. And of course, I could multiply that out, but it really doesn't make sense to do that. Now let's do the same thing. Okay, well, what would be a sub n minus 2? Well, you would tell me that obviously it's 1.005 times a sub n minus 3. So if I wanted to rewrite this, I would have 1.005, and then I would have 1.005, and then instead of a sub n minus 2, I'm going to replace it with all of this. So 1.005 a sub n minus 3. Well, what if I kept that going down to the nth term? So what it looks like right now is that I have 1, 2, 3, 1 1.005s, and I have a sub n minus 3. So I have whatever this number is seems to match how many 1.005s I have. So if I went all the way down to using n values instead of 3 values, now I'm going to use n values. So it looks like a sub n would be 1.005 n times, and then I would have a sub n minus n. Do you agree? That seems to be the pattern that we're coming up with. And you're probably thinking, okay, I don't get it. What's the point here? Well, the point here is now I have 1.005 to the n, and a sub n minus n is a sub 0. Well, what's a sub 0? a sub 0 we are given is 100. So a sub n can be written, if I replace this with 100, can be written as 100 times 1.005 to the n. And that is my explicit function. Now, of course, I could check it as I have before. I could check it by plugging it back up here, but remember I didn't find a total up here, so we're not going to do that um, for these. I didn't find a total, so there's nothing to check it against, but feel free to do that on your own if you'd like. I have not, however, answered the final question, which said, how much money is in the account after one year? So after one year means a 12, because one year is obviously 12 months here in the American English calendar. So a 12 would be 100 times 1 1.005 to the 12th, which is very easy to find using my calculator, which means $106.17. Up next, we're really going to dig into the different ways in which you can solve first order, second order, and so forth, homogeneous and non-homogeneous recurrence relations. So that's the next several videos. Um, in the next video, we're going to focus on the two methods that we just learned, which is iteration and back substitution for solving first order linear homogeneous recurrence relations.